Well, hello again. Um, <laughs> I've got an idea to try today. Uh, I've not done it before. I don't know if it's going to work. But I thought I might as well record what I do just, <laughs> just in case it does work. The idea is to make a letterpress panel to put on the front of the card. Um, what I want to use to make the letter the, the letterpress um, are these leaf dies from Sizzix. I know a lot of people have got these. I think they look absolutely lovely. So what I'm going to do to make my impression, my letterpress, is to stick some of these together so that they will make those marks on, on, on the card. But because I want to um, colour them as well, to ink them, I'm going to use a piece of vellum as well. A long time ago, I think um, Jennifer Maguire did um, one of these kind of things. So uh, I don't know whether what I have in my mind is detracting from the letterpress or and will offend the purists or whether it's going to take it up a notch. I don't know. What I intend to do is to use more than one colour. On the on the leaf so <laughs> we'll see if it works let's get going right I'm going to join these layers together so I've got three I don't know if three is going to be the right thickness whether two would have do would have done but I'm going to try three um, and just a piece of vellum now if you look at this one you can probably see there are some marks on this and Vellum is what I use if I'm using dies that are going to make an impression on the top plate, not the bottom one. I'm talking about the back of the die making an impression on the top plate because in my switch particularly, the pressure is really, really great. And the back of the die, not the cutting side, the back side will leave an impression in that top plate. Now, when that top plate is used on another piece of card, if I'm using a big panel particularly, I'll get a line, an indentation on the new piece of die cut. So what I do is I put a piece of vellum between the die and the top plate. And that does two things. One, it helps to protect the top plate uh, which also, in fact, stops the top plate or doesn't stop it altogether, but reduces the effect of dents in the top plate, leaving an impression on your next piece of die cutting. So that was kind of a bit incidental, but I just happened to see those marks on there. So I've cut my um, two um, vellum ones. I've cut three each of the other two. I'm just going to stick them together. I do go on, don't I? I start off on one thing and then suddenly I'm like a grasshopper I think of something else. Right, let's put the one, next one on top. Make sure we align them as carefully as we can. Why I've got this out is because these dies particularly seem to hang on to all the little bits. So I, I use my brush on the top to brush them out of the back and then if I, I still can't get them all out I use a pokey tool to finally clear the, the the tiny some of these are so tiny you can't get it out from the wrong side you have to poke at it from the side where you can see them so there's three and now I'll put the vellum one on the bottom don't know how this is going to work we'll just have to kind of see it's going to be suck it in to see Right, vellum on the bottom. Why I'm putting vellum on the bottom is because if I put um, just regu the regular cardstock on the bottom, it will absorb more of the ink. The, the ink is likely to be more easily transferred from vellum to card than it would from card to card. Okay, let's just stick these together quickly. Um, I don't know how these little indentation -y bits are going to fair when it comes to um, making an impression but it, 
only one way to find out. Lots of times people leave comments on either my cards or my videos or whatever and say, what about if you did such and such? And all I can say is just have a go and see what's the worst that can happen. You could find out something fabulous. So, you know, just go for it, I would. Don't, he who hesitates is lost, isn't that the, the expression? I think it might be. But there's a, obviously another one that will counter, <laughs> counteract that, that saying. Right, there's my three layers. And now I'll do the, the vellum for the bottom layer. This fat tipped Nuvo glue pen just covers a lot in a, a few swipes, which is quite, quite good. Right, so there are my, th my two elements for my letterpress technique. Now I'm just going to put the lid on my go and wipe up. Oops, no, that baby wipe there. It's funny, I was looking at um, the transcript of one of my videos. Somebody was say saying to me I'd, I'd called something by its wrong name and I thought, I didn't. I didn't call it by the wrong make. I'm sure I didn't. So I went back and had a listen and I thought, no, it sounds right to me. So then I looked at the transcript and I was right in what I thought. This lady had obviously misheard me. But um, <laughs> there was one point where I was doing something or other and I was fiddling around with a, a baby wipe packet <laughs> and the transcript came up with applause, <laughs> which I thought, I thought was quite amusing. Anyway, let's see. Now, I'm trying to decide. I've got these two out because I don't know whether to try and do arrange this so that some of them is kind of off the square or whether they would be better self-contained within it. So I think what I might do is... Do the larger one, and if I don't like it, I can always cut it down, can't I? But I can't make that one bigger. So let me cut a, one of these. I've got the card I'm using today is not my usual linen. I thought I would give give it the best chance and have it um, with a completely flat card. I believe this particular technique works really well with watercolour paper but watercolour paper that I've got is quite bumpy. I believe you can get watercolour paper. I've got various sorts but they're all kind of bumpy. Um, you can get some that is much more flat so I'm just using a flat card and we'll see how we go. So do you know I've got sticky fingers now I'm gonna to have to wipe them. There's one thing I can't bear it's sticky really sticky fingers. I remember Donkey's years ago, we, we, when I was teaching, when I was first teaching, must have been in the 60s, the kids were doing something about senses. And uh, there was one class assembly and the kids were going around talking about the five senses and all this kind of stuff. And they went around asking the teachers, what don't you like the feel of? And I can remember vividly, I said, sticky fingers, can't bear sticky fingers. Right, now for this technique, we're going to need an embossing mat, a rubber mat. Um, my machine is a Platinum 6. So for embossing, I would need, it's this middle, it's this middle sandwich here. So I'm going to do bottom plate. Then I'm going to use my rubber mat, which I can't see. Here it is. Rubber mat. Next, I'm going to put my piece of card that I'm going to do my impression with. Then I'm going to put my leaves like this. Do I like that? I'll see, I'll see. I've got to kind of arrange them and look at it now because in a moment there's going to be some ink on there and I can't I can't move them once I've got ink on, otherwise I'll make a smudge. So I'll try it about like that. So I'll do that one first, arrange that and then put the other one afterwards. Okay, let me just get some ink on these for a minute. And I am going to try and use um, Distress Ink. Now that feels a bit sticky to me. I'm going to give it a quick wipe with the baby wipe just to 
see if there's any glue on there. Just get it off because it won't matter if it's a bit damp because we know what properties dis distress oxides have. Did I say distress or distress oxide? I'm going to use distress oxides. I think dye inks are really recommended for this particular technique, but we'll see. Right, now I did say to you I'm going to try and do two colours. So let me have a look at my distress oxide colour chart. And... Uh, da, 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 da. What shall I choose? I'm, I always go back to this Rustic Wilderness. I do love it. I think I will do Rustic Wilderness. I don't really like crushed olive by itself. Perhaps I'll use some of that with it. Let's see. So let's try. This might be horrible, but we'll give it a chance. Rustic Wilderness. That's over here somewhere. There it is. There's my Rustic Wilderness. And what did I say? Cr crushed olive. All right, we'll see, we'll see. Right, what I'm going to do is the crushed olive first, all over. And then I'm going to add a bit of the rustic wilderness round the, ed round the edges or just kind of dabbing. See how we go. This might not work at all, but we live in hopes, don't we? Right, let's try a bit of this rustic wilderness. Now, I don't know whether to do a little spritz of water or not. I don't know whether the I don't know what. We'll try it as it is and just see how we go, shall we? Might not be wet enough. We'll, we'll just see. Okay, this is the moment of truth, folks, isn't it? Right, I said I was going to do this one first. Get my tweezers. Put that one there. This one. There. Okay. Now to emboss with this machine, I need this blue plate. So here we go. The moment of truth, people. Oh. I've gone quiet. Holding my breath. Right, here we are. Let's have a look. Letter pressed, all right. It's pressed right in. Yeah, that's probably because of might be because of the glue I used. Whoa! Look at this. Now, looking at it, I think I oh, there's interesting, isn't it? Look at that. Um. It's not quite, I think, you see, I would like to put some water on that, but it might have made it a bit soggy. Shall I try it again? I'm not quite sure how the, the vellum will hold up. I could, let me just see. It's not bad. If I, I've got a... A new um, like a, it's like a wink. Oh, here it is, like a wink of Stella, but it's it's made by Nuvo. What's it called? Glit, glitter, glitter gloss. It says to press. Don't want too much. Is that coming out? Yes. Okay. Let's try this. Oh, this is quite nice. Perhaps this is the answer. A bit of... Now, this will need to be flattened 
but it, do, it does letterpress it well, doesn't it? I think I may have got away with actually just two layers. Two layers of um, white card. That's this is this is this is a lot better. Look, I'll, let me come in a bit. Oops, can you see? It's kind of smoothing out the the two colours, and it's giving that lovely little sheen. You don't have to be incredibly accurate, but round the edges, I think you need to be a little careful. So what I'm going to do with this now is to mount it onto another piece of card, use one of more of my press cut um, dies i have so many and there are oh that is lovely oh that did it that absolutely did it that that um the nouveau that it's it's like a winky filler as i said but isn't that interesting letterpress when you haven't got letterpress i am going to have to flatten it there's no doubt about that i think if i dry it properly um it will it will probably help a little bit I could have misted the card before I started, couldn't I? There are various options open to me here, I think, for um, the next one. I think, right, first thing, I'm going to mist the card I'm going to go into. I may only use two layers of card. But I like it, don't you? Wow. I will make up the card. I will put it onto Instagram, a pretty job. I will put it onto my Facebook page. Um, and uh, I hope you can have a good look at it in either of those two places. Um, so I reckon, I reckon that was a success. As ever, thank you so much for watching.